Let's take a quick look at setting up your MIDI devices. So what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to go to this rack space, and I've got three blank ones right here. I'll click on the rack space and go to the rear panel view. So we're looking at the back, and you can see the various different blocks. Now I've dropped in a MIDI monitor block there, just so that we can kind of see what's going on as we hook things up. I've got a MIDI input device, which is Omni. So that's going to take any MIDI from any keyboard, any port, any um, channel, and route it where I want to go. So if you only are generally going to use one MIDI device, um, you know, like a keyboard, a master keyboard or something, you can probably stick with Omni if you're not worried about it sending extra stuff on other channels. It's just the easiest way to make sure that no matter what keyboard you plug in, it works. That's kind of why it's there, so that, you know, you don't have to worry, oh, this keyboard's actually transmitting on channel two or this one. Now, obviously, if you want to differentiate between that, Omni is not the way to go. But for this case now, we'll leave it on Omni. I'm going to connect the output of the MIDI Omni to the input of the MIDI monitor just so I can verify that I'm getting notes. So I'll double click this MIDI monitor and let's clear the previous notes and I'll hit a few notes. There we go. And now let's check. I'll see if this keyboard has aftertouch. I'll push hard. Yeah, look at that sort of continuous level of pressure, channel pressure going. So it does. All right. So now the keyboard that I'm using is sending it. I'm using this Arturia Keylab 88 key keyboard. Now, if I wanted to send the uh, just individual MIDI channel, uh, what I could do is not use a MIDI Omni block. Okay, so let me just get rid of this. And instead, I go to my MIDI inputs and choose the Keylab 88. So there it is. I've got a separate one. I'll just get this MIDI Omni out of the way. I'm not going to delete it just yet. So I'll take that, and there we go. I'll play a few notes again, see them pop up on my MIDI monitor. Great. Now, if I plug in another device, it'll become available to me. So I can instantly see it show up in the Omni area, or I can set up its individual MIDI input as well. So let me plug in this Arturia Mini Lab, nice little tiny portable keyboard. What I'll do is I'll right click and I'll create another MIDI input. And look at that. There it is. It showed up, the Arturia Mini Lab. So I didn't need to rescan or anything. I just gave it a few seconds and it popped up. So we'll disconnect that one and I will reconnect with the Mini Lab. By the way, I didn't have to if I don't want to. I can keep more than one thing connected to this MIDI monitor, which is great. I can go into the Key Lab um, and play a few notes. So there's a few notes from my Key Lab. Or I'll go to the Mini Lab and play a few notes. And there's a few notes from my mini lab. And I can verify that it's there. You might notice, hey, but it's not saying which keyboard it's coming from. Well, let's disconnect the key lab totally. So now I'll play a few notes on the key lab and I'll hit them hard so you can hear them through the microphone. Nothing. But I'll hit a few notes on my mini lab and there it goes. So it's a great way to differentiate between keyboards if you're going to use multiple devices. Um, if you have multiple guitar pedals that you want to route and control different effects, you can decide whether you want everything to happen on every channel or whether you want to differentiate between individual channels. There's also a preferences menu. So if you go to options and go to global MIDI settings, you can configure some of your global MIDI assignments, like what buttons will move a patch or a rack space up and down, direct access to patches, things like that. Uh, if you have transport controls on your MIDI controller, and you can also decide what, how you want to accept control changes. So if you only want to accept control changes from your big 88 key master keyboard, you can switch it and select individual devices and say, okay, uh, when I do, you know, program changes on my other keyboards, please do not change my rack space. But if I do it on my key lab, please do change my rack space. So that's kind of nice too, to have that flexibility. So that's how you get your MIDI devices up and running. And it's good to use the MIDI monitor just to make sure that they're running before you go. It doesn't add any latency. It doesn't add anything or remove anything. It just shows you that your keyboard is indeed um, happening. And you might want to use it anyway, just because you can access it from the front panel later on. If you want to put in like an LED light or a, a label that shows the current um, MIDI message, having this already set up and routed is a real handy thing to have. If you've started to add a lot of MIDI devices and you know that there's some that you just don't want to use, maybe there's a guitar pedal you've plugged in that you're not going to use the MIDI ports on, you can easily go to options and choose MIDI ports and decide which ones you'd like to show and hide. 
So for example, I might have my digital mixer plugged in here, but I'm not really going to use the MIDI ports on that. I've got some other great MIDI ports on my various keyboards devices that I'll be using. So I'll disable them so that whenever I'm here in this dialog, I can right click and I go to MIDI inputs and I don't see those particular devices. So if you're starting to clog things up and you want to restrict it a little bit or you want to add in a device that you don't see, that's how you do it.